It's Serena vs Venus once again for the 31st time, as both sisters are set to face off in the Lexington second round. Serena was first on court today and took on fellow American Bernard Arpera. Both women started off slow, especially Serena, who quite frankly should have won the first set. I say this because Para had a very low shot tolerance early on, but Serena, who suffered an early break, was very erratic and returned poorly. In the second set, Para drastically improved her game, and despite being down 3-1, she turned things around to go up 6-4 for all 40 love on Serena's serve. Serena somehow escaped that game, and from that point forward, the entire match did a 180. Williams won the last 8 of 9 games to take the match 4-6, 6-4, 6-1. I thought this was a good performance overall from Serena, because while she was very off in the first half, she settled in and staged an amazing comeback to get the W. I think this match exemplifies why Serena decided to play this event, because even though she said she felt confident in her practice sessions, actual match play is completely different, especially seeing that she hadn't played in 6 months. Para, on the other hand, played in World Team Tennis, which definitely gave her the advantage as she was much sharper off the ground the first half of the match. I think this was a good test for Serena, because getting that 3 set win allowed her a greater opportunity at knocking off some rust. The top seed herself can attest to this, as here's what she said after her victory. Yeah, I definitely think so. I have a really tough match the next round, so... Um, but it's good just in general because I haven't played, like a lot of players have been playing like little things and little matches and playing against other players, but I've only been training. So this is, um, this was really good for me. I was missing shots, but I was like, oh, I should probably hit that that way. I was just trying to get back in the swing of things. In a sharp contrast, Venus Williams played high level tennis from the very start completely dominating two-time major champion Victoria Azarenka, 6-3, 6-2. This was the best match Venus played in a long time and was her first tour win since September 2019. Every part of her game was on, her ground strokes, her movement, and most importantly, her serve. Her new service motion worked wonders as V consistently served over 110 miles per hour and only produced one double fault. Although Azarenka isn't at her best, Venus looked like she could beat anyone across her path, even her sister. I think the break did her good because it gave her ample time to heal any injuries and build on her game even more. Clearly pleased by her form, Venus gave a heartwarming and entertaining post-match interview. Well, first, I want to say hi to my mom and dad and my sisters. I love you. Also, I want to say thank you to all the healthcare workers out there working to keep everybody um, safe. And then thank you to the WTA and all the tournaments for putting this on. We're so happy to be back. I've just never been so grateful to play. And I've never appreciated the fans more, too, because now we know what it's like without them. I'm grateful for, like, the handful of people that could be here. So with that being said, yes, that was a crazy first round. Um, this is almost like the first match of the season. This is the second time that we've had to do this. I played her first round in Auckland a couple years ago, and then this time it's like first time you've played in six months, and it's like, okay, I'm playing a Grand Slam champion, form number one for both of us. So it is stressful to come out here and play your best under these circumstances, under new circumstances, and she played very well and just kind of never gave up to the end, and um, I was happy to have some cushions and some leads there. Well, your serve looked terrific, even a 102 mile per hour second serve. Are you doing anything different, or is that a fresh arm? Well, I might be doing something different, <laughs> but, um, you know, I've been grateful to um, have these God-given biceps. And um, <laughs> I just always been a big girl. I'm six one, so you got to use my size. And um, I feel very comfortable going big. It just comes off my racket like that. So um, I get to use that in the match, and it's it's just so helpful in these crucial times. So it'll be the 31st meeting between you and your sister Serena. Oh, really? How special is that for you? It's so special. Yeah, I mean, who would have guessed that this draw would have happened? You know, playing two former world number ones and Grand Slam champions in the first round in the middle of Kentucky. I'm like, oh my god. But um, this is what it is, and this is, these are great tests for me coming into the season, and I know that I'm hitting the ball well. Victoria's hitting the ball unbelievable, and I know Serena, you know, came back from the brink and waited to, like, the last minute to play her best tennis, and that's what champions are made of. So 
um, here we go again, number 31, and I'm looking forward to the next one after this too. Previewing the Serena Venus match a bit, I actually give the edge to Venus. Although Serena leads her head to head 18 to 12, Venus, if she maintains the form she showed today, will be very difficult to beat. Serena will likely raise her level though, which makes this matchup even more intriguing. This could actually be one of their best ever matches, which is ironic seeing as it's a second round match in an international level event in Kentucky. Not to mention that there will be zero spectators other than coaches. This was another interesting factor because both Serena and Venus's matches today would have had packed stands in normal circumstances and not hearing big cheers was odd to say the least. It almost seemed like a high school match and it would be even more interesting to see how things would be in New York in that big Arthur Ashe Stadium. Nonetheless, it's amazing that 22 years later, these two champions are gracing the court against one another and I can't wait to see them play on Thursday. Coco Goff, who was also competing in Kentucky, won her first match back after the layoff, beating compatriot Caroline Dolahide 7-5-7-5. Goff, who experienced many highs and lows throughout the match, still had a positive outlook on her performance, giving us a mature analysis. Um, honestly, we give it an A. I mean, it was my first match back in uh, January, since January, and even though like I probably didn't pay like at the best tennis as possible. I think that the attitude and the effort was an A because I was really nervous for today's match um, just because I haven't played in a while and um, I honestly did better than I thought <laughs> than I thought I would. So a year ago you were making your best run in the U.S. Open. Now mm -hmm. there's expectations that you could win. Does that add extra pressure on you? Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Um, Not really. I mean People can think what they want, but I mean, I'm just out here having fun. And I mean, obviously I want to win, but I'm not going to put pressure on myself to win anything. Just try my best out there on the court every day. Of course, your next match is with the number two seed, Irina <laughs> Sablinka. How uh, do you, are you going to approach that match? Uh, to be honest, I haven't really thought about that yet. Um, I still have doubles today, but I mean, I'm just going to approach it the same as I do every match wanting to win and hopefully having a good mentality out there. As the interviewer mentioned, Coco Golf will next face second seed Irina Sabalenka, which would be a blockbuster match. I think this is a winnable match for Golf because Sabalenka is very error prone at times, which was evident by her three set opening round win. I give the slight edge to the Belarusian due to experience, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if Golf came out with the victory. Now a top American who did not advance to the round of 16 in Kentucky was Sloane Stevens, who lost to Canadian teenager Layla Fernandez, 6-3, 6-3. This is actually Sloane's second straight loss to Fernandez, as the two play right before the stoppage in March. This was a disappointing loss for Sloane, especially seeing that she played well in the World Team Tennis event a few weeks ago. She hasn't really been herself since the French Open in 2019 and is now 1 in 6 on the year. In Europe, Simona Halep made her official return at the Prague Open, winning a roller coaster of a match against Polona Hercog. Halep needed 7 match points to grab the 6 1, 1 6, 7 6 victory, and like Serena, had many highs and many lows. I think that these Halep and Serena victories are going to be good for them in the long run because not playing for so long brings challenges that they were able to overcome. I think most players will struggle in their first few matches back, but at least those Lexington and Prague players will be a step ahead. That's all for today's video, and let me know your thoughts on the results. Were you surprised that Serena and Simona struggled? Also, who do you think will win this 31st Williams battle? Leave your predictions in the comment section below, and subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever we post new content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.